On this episode of John Marucci on the Road, we'll review Hillsborough River State Park just northeast of Tampa, Florida, near the city of Zephyr Hills. Hillsborough River is one of the first Florida state parks created in 1938 by the Civilian Conservation Corps, with some of the original structures still intact. Upon visiting Hillsborough River State Park, one of the first things noticed is the age of the park's natural surroundings, making it feel near jungle-like in areas. The campground is older than many of the other state parks in Florida, and unfortunately, we visited during a deluge of caterpillars. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. I made the jump to traveling with my RV back in 2016 and have never looked back. I've had my share of problems along the way, and this channel attempts to be what I wish I had when I started out. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hillsborough River State Park contains just under 3,000 acres and is named after the Hillsborough River that runs through the park. There are a variety of recreational activities available at the park, including fishing, canoeing, kayaking, hiking, and trail running. There are 7.3 miles of hiking trails through some thick hammock forest, as well as limited biking opportunities on the 2.2 mile Park Loop Road and the 1.6 mile Wetlands Restoration Nature Trail. Given its location to Tampa, Hillsborough River State Park is very popular and can be extremely busy on weekends and holidays. As far as the campgrounds, there are two campground loops with a total of 112 campsites. Sites have city water connections and electric service, with all sites also having picnic tables and fire rings. No campsites have sewer connections. The campground loops have modern shower facilities, and there is one dump station to accommodate all the campsites. The 112 to 1 campsite to dump station ratio means you likely will have to wait to dump tanks while leaving during busy times. Before we get into the five criteria that we cover for campground reviews, we want to let you know about a great travel resource on JohnMarucci.com. Our RV travel blog and accompanying podcast provide concise and insightful RV travel information, news, and opinion pieces to help with your RV travel. You can sign up to be reminded when each blog is posted so you don't miss a thing. Just head over to JohnMarucci.com and click the blog link to sign up. You know, there are five criteria we look at when rating a campground. First up, hospitality and check-in. We give this a four out of five as it was easy to check in, but we did arrive on a weekend and endured a very long line of cars attempting to enter the park. Once at the ranger station, we were able to stay in the vehicle to check in. It was a simple matter of having the ranger confirm our reservation, give us our site tag, and we were on our way. Next in our review is infrastructure and amenities, which we're going to give a 3 out of 5. Not all the park's amenities are in excellent shape, especially the very old and uneven campground loop roads. While the bathhouses are modern, they are by no means new. Trails and features within the park are well marked with signage, and playgrounds are in good shape. Unfortunately, some of the amenities are still closed, either due to the pandemic or because of refurbishment. This includes the large pool. Like most Florida State Park campgrounds, the campground is maintained and cleaned by the campground host, and there is a security gate with passcode to enter the campground area after hours. Site quality also gets a 3 out of 5, as the campsites are older, not very private, and could use some attention and refurbishment. Most sites are relatively level, with a mix of loose dirt and grass. Many of the sites are very shaded given the age of the trees and plant life within the campground. This can be a very good thing on a hot sunny day, but also means that natural light is limited at some of the campsites. Generally, we found the sites had an older feel and needed some attention. Also, we visited during no small infestation of hatching caterpillars that were a real nuisance. I really like caterpillars, however, we were mistimed in our visit and apparently booked when they were all hatching. There were thousands of them at the campsite. Literally within five to ten minutes of setting up camp, they were all over the truck and trailer tires and crawling up the body of the vehicles. Within a day or so, the infestation was somewhat overwhelming, and we began finding the little guys within the trailer itself. To avoid this, I would highly recommend passing on visiting during this time. For us, it happened in the final week of March 2021. But this hatching season may vary, and you may want to contact the park ranger station to get more information before booking. 
Our exercise ability rating is only a 3 out of 5. Although there are many ways to exercise, the running aspect is somewhat limited given the shorter main park road loop and shorter trails. Some of the trails may work for trail running, but time of day and weekend crowded times would certainly curtail the enjoyment of this. This is also true for biking, as the opportunity for significant mileage is limited. Canoeing and kayaking are certainly options on the Hillsborough River. Just make sure you bring your own equipment, as rentals at the park are currently unavailable as of this taping. Hiking is likely a nice choice for exercise, as there are several miles of trails through thick brush and older forests. For our final rating, we're giving a 5 out of 5 for workability, as the bandwidth for AT&T and Verizon were both good. Using an iPhone 10, we had speeds of 58.9 megabits per second down and 0.77 megabits per second up on AT&T, making it decent to use. Using our Verizon 8800L MiFi, we experienced good speeds of 21.9 megabits per second down and 11.7 megabits per second up. These good bandwidth speeds made it very easy to work from at the campsite. Overall, we thought Hillsborough River State Park was a fair value for a Florida State Park. The campground and infrastructure are showing their age at this point and could use some refurbishment. The campsites also could use some refreshment. While opportunities for exercise are present, there are some limitations. Also, if you do plan to camp here, be aware that the park is a main destination for local residents, meaning it will be very crowded on weekends and holidays. Finally, check with the park before booking during caterpillar hatching season. It would have been a much more pleasant visit had we timed things better. Remember that Florida State Parks have an 11 month booking window, so you'll need to plan your trip out well ahead of time. Okay, that'll do it for now. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. We'd love for you to join the On The Road team by subscribing to the channel. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. And you can also follow me on Facebook at John Marucci On The Road. Also, don't forget the great travel resources, podcast, and blog available on JohnMarucci.com. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. This is John Marucci, and so long for now. I'm going to say we're out on a walk here, Hillsborough River State Park, north of Tampa. And you're seeing a shot of an armadillo in the wild. I always like these little creatures. I'm just along the road.